Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna Senior Transition Support, specialists in downsizing and seniors' residences. And good afternoon. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in life transitions, downsizing in the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Coming right up on the first half of today's show, we're going to be talking to the winner of the ultra endurance cycling event called the Race Across America, a grueling 5,000 kilometer bike race from California to the East Coast. The winner completed, believe it or not, in 11 days. And oh, by the way, it happened to be a Canadian and the first ever woman to win the race. We'll hear from her next. Uh, Corey, I know you have been working hard all year and especially Mm -hmm. in the last uh, couple of weeks as you're the director of an amazing bereavement camp and it's actually being held next weekend, isn't it? That's true. So tomorrow is our very famous meet and greet. (laughs) So we will be meeting with the campers and their families, letting them get to know each other so that they can come back next weekend and feel comfortable in this program we're not letting any pandemic stop us from making this happen well good for you and even though it is just sort of a weekend and a week-long event there's 52 weeks of work going into that i I know personally all that you do (laughs) hear it god bless way to go Uh, good for you uh what do we have coming up on the second half on the second half we're going to talk to um two women because a lot of us we think about side jobs or pursuing a passion project perhaps but These two women actually started something new basically while they were on maternity leave. They decided that they were going to bake some bread. In fact, challah is not even just bread, challah. And and it has exploded. (laughs) They are making the best challah in town. I'd like to say talk about putting your money where your mouth is. We're going to hear all about that after the 3.30 news. Yeah, that's going to be quite interesting. They've done a heck of a job. All right. Well, it's considered the world's toughest bicycle race. The Race Across America is a grueling 5,000-kilometer bike race starting on the west coast of California and ends in Annapolis, Maryland. On the evening of June 26, this past summer, 2021, Canadian Leah Goldstein made history. At 52 years old, Leah became the first female ever to win the overall solo division of the Race Across America in its 39-year history. During the previous 10-plus days, she rode her bike through 50 degrees Celsius deserts, over 100,000 feet of climbing, through lightning storms and against prairie winds. We have Leah on the line. Leah, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, Corey. Hi, Matt. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Leah, thanks for coming on the show. Such an amazing story, uh, such an accomplishment. So, uh, you know, there you are at the starting line. This is the end of June, June 26th in Oceanside, California. And Pardon me, it's June 15th when you're starting. And um, when I first heard this story, I kind of started doing some calculations in my head. Like, wait a minute here, you, you, 5,000 kilometers, and, and you have less than 12 days to do it. You actually did it in 11 11 days. So I'm saying, okay, you've got to do 450 kilometers per day. You've got about four hours of sleep per night. But that's not exactly how that works, doesn't it? I, so when you start, this is when you've got full energy. How long were you on that bike before you took your first break? Well, like you said, because you've got 12 days to do it, you don't have a lot of time for sleep or you know anything else but pedaling. So how we rode it, the plan was to ride the first 40 hours nonstop. <laughs> And then I'd start my sleeping cycle of three hours, and then you ride 24 hours, and three hours, 24 hours, and then the last three days, because there was, you know, potential that I could win the race, we cut my sleep to 90 minutes, right? So that's basically how I rode across the country, right? (laughs) Wow. But there was many other challenges aside from that. But yeah, that was the plan in advance, right? Because you have to be really strategic not to cut too much sleep too early, Mm. So, you know, that was our plan going into this race. So you just jump on that bike 40 hours straight before your first <laughs> yeah. break. Yeah, you're only coming off the bike um, if you have to go to the bathroom or you have to have a bike change or you have to sleep. Everything else, you can brush your teeth on the bike, you can eat on the bike, you can drink <laughs> on the bike. Everything else is on the bike. <laughs> you know? it, it, okay, I listened to this. Like, I was tired when Matt was describing what you did. <laughs> I needed a nap, so I don't know how you did this. Anyways, let, let's talk about some of the other 
aspects, the competitors that, that were in the race, how many actually f- are in it and how many actually finished? Well, actually, this year was the worst conditions the race ever experienced, and only three finishers. Like, I finished um, after 11 days, 17 hours behind me came the first man, and then two hours after him came the last rider, which is the second male to cross the finish line. And the reason why is because of the heat. There was heat wave, um, heat, excessive heat weight warning, warnings through the desert of 50 to 54 degrees Celsius. And it wasn't just the heat through California, Arizona. It continued right into Colorado, into Maryland. You know, it was like it it cooled down at night to maybe 35. So you didn't get much reprieve from that, right? You know, Mm -hmm. and it was, that was the biggest challenge. It was like, you know, just surviving those uh, crazy conditions. Well, I'm unbelievable. Life Under Hearst, Matt Delvecchio here with Corey Sroda. And that's the voice of Leah Goldstein. 52 years old, Leah became the first female ever to win the overall solo division, 5,000 kilometer bike race called Race Across America. Um, now, Leah, I want to expand a little bit on, on this because I can't, uh, we can't underestimate this desert conditions. And from what I understand, I mean, you're reaching 50 degrees Celsius on that bike. You're going hours right. and hours and hours i think it was three solid days of desert how did you get through that obviously the competitors the vast majority couldn't get through that yeah i mean even teams had dropped out most of most riders i mean they dropped out during that part and many ended up in the hospital having to get ivs and how i rode it i mean i was lucky enough to have a nurse on board with us so i could stop twice to get an iv but in order to ride in those conditions i had like an ice sock around my neck frog skin Mm -hmm. And then every five to 10 minutes, my crew would leap in front of me with a bottle of water that I doused over my head. And I'd have to also um, cool down my handlebars and the pads where you put your, um, you know, where the arrow bars are because I couldn't touch anything. It was that hot, you know, and and even the rider that was in in the lead at that time, the first two days was a Dutch man. His um, little speedometer started to melt, the plastic. That's that's the intensity of the heat. Like, I kid you not, you could have fried a steak on that and not asphalt. It was it was excruciatingly hot. Wow. So you, you mentioned something um, that is fascinating to me. You mentioned your crew. Let's talk about Correct. the crew. I understand you had nine people for this race. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you're not doing anything. That's your lifeline, right? I mean, without them, you know, it's, it, you're not doing anything. It's not a, I won the race. It's we won the race. Because if it wasn't for them, I probably, well, I most certainly wouldn't make it across the country. And I wouldn't, wouldn't have won because they are responsible for everything, for the navigation, keeping you cool, feeding you, watching you that you're not, you know, overtired and, and directing you in the right direction and, and pushing you at the same time. Because there's a fine line there. So, and they're also sleeping deprived they're hungry they're tired and yet they have to give me energy that i that i need from all of them so i mean it's a huge team effort absolutely without a question who are these people on your crew like are they people you knew are they people that are assigned to you um, no, it's people that you know. I mean, I'm lucky enough, very fortunate to have the same crew members that I've had in the past. So they know me, you know, they know my style. Um, they know our strategy. We work together. We plan things together. And it's just kinesiologists, massage therapists. I had a nurse there. I had a bike mechanic. So you're basically bringing a city of people right across the country <laughs> that have specific skills that help me, you know, to get across the country as safe as possible. Just incredible. And and uh, when we were talking off air, uh, Leah, you couldn't speak highly enough of them and, and you almost made it like they won the race for you as an alien, by the way. They you, did. You were I the mean, one I just so, you know, you just can't be more thankful enough as an athlete to have such support, right? You know, because, you know, you're not paying the millions of dollars, right? And uh, so, yeah, well, I mean, they, they mean everything to me. Without them, like I said, it would, wouldn't have happened. You were very humble. That's Leah Goldstein, first ever woman to win the race across America in its 39 year history. She cycled 5,000 kilometers in just over 11 days. So, you talked about, I'd like you to just to go over the the biking plan one more time you you biked 40 hours without Correct. sleep that was your first break you still have 9 or 10 days still to go and yeah. so you had a plan in place and so again you're averaging how many hours of sleep a night after that first 40 hours well like i said it's it's 3 hours and then you ride 24 hours so every 24 hours you take your your sleep break right and that continued till about three quarters of the way in and then it's down to 90 minutes. So yeah, something's got to cut, right? <laughs> <Just the sleep laughs> right. First. 
<laughs> right? You know, and I think just because, you know, it was, wow, like I could be possibly making history as being the first woman to win this race. So my team says, no, we got we to gotta pump it up a bit because we've wasted so much time trying to cool me down. The speed had, you know, you couldn't push as hard as, as you want to in those kind of conditions, right? You know, mm-hmm. so yeah. because we lost so much time, the sleep had to go. <laughs> Fair enough, but I, I just I can't imagine that. Anyway, the majority of the other racers, they packed it in. You mentioned that. They just couldn't do it. Did you ever Correct. reach a point where you said, that's it, check please, I'm living, I'm, ta- I'm leaving, I'm tapping out? Oh, God, no. No, I don't care. I, I mean, <laughs> even if it would take me a year, I would I would crawl across the country. <laughs> you know, because I don't, you know, even if you don't make your goal, I just think it's, it's always important to finish, you know, whatever you're doing, no matter what it is. So I had that had never crossed my mind. It was just the frustration of the conditions that I think affected me more than anything else. Is damn, I wish I could ride this faster. Hey, but know. quitting, no, it's never an option I, for me. Not, not even in the cards. It's amazing to hear you you say that. But we're going to talk about uh, after our, our traffic update. Uh, part of the reasons why perhaps you have that determination and perseverance. But you know, uh, we do have to head out to traffic, Leah. I just before <laughs> after traffic, we're going to ask you you're getting close to the finish line now this is like day 11 you're thinking oh my goodness this might actually happen the first female to ever win the race across the america in 39 year history and then your body gives out on you you collapse with a heart rate of 190 so we want to hear about that life unrehearsed brought to you by floor lee senior residences always there for you safe reassuring and comforting we call it home. Welcome back to Life on Rehearse. I'm Corey Sirota, along with my co-host Matt Del Vecchio, and we're talking to someone who indeed did ride her bicycle, Canadian Leah Goldstein. At 52 years old, Leah became the first female to ever win the overall solo division of the 5,000 kilometer bike race across America in its 39 year history. Now, it is so impressive to, to think about what you did to have accomplished it. However, n- not without its uh, challenges, without a doubt. So you're, you were getting close to the finish line. You're thinking that this is going to happen. First right. female to ever win this race. And right. then your body gives out. You yeah. collapse I mean, with a heart, rate, a heart rate of yeah. 190. What happened yeah. next? Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I mean, for one thing with Race Cross America, even when I was in the lead in the Appalachians, you know, I you you never write a victory speech in your head or whatever, because you never know what can happen in in this magnitude of of racing. Right. So a a mile, like at one point six K from the finish, like you said, my heart rate shot up to one ninety two hundred and it was just pounding out of my chest and my body just gave out like I couldn't feel my arms and legs. I fell off my bike. I landed on a patch of grass, thank goodness, um, that was on the the right side of the road. And my crew jumped out of the car. They're trying to get me up, and, you know, and I couldn't move. It's just, I think, just the exhaustion, low electrolytes. Um, I, I just think my body just shut down, so not doing it anymore. So I, I tried to get back on the bike. I couldn't. So you're allowed to walk your bike. My crew took my cycling shoes off. They put on some oversized running shoes that – one of my crew members were was wearing <laughs> and I started to walk my bike and then um, I collapsed again. And then my crew said, you know what, you can meet there right there. It's right there. And it, it took me one hour to get to the finish. And if you look at the actual finish of the race, it's a little bit of a descent. So I hopped back on my bike and I kind of glided into the finish with pink running shoes <laughs> and two crew members <laughs> running beside me. So I won't fall over. So yeah, that was the worst part of the whole race to tell you the truth was that last 1.6 kilometers 5,000 right. kilometers and you got, you got a kilometer and a bit to go oh my goodness well yeah. you know you know Leah it obviously takes a, a special person to accomplish what you did let's just remind our listeners that only three people actually finished this race Correct. but it, maybe a lot of people may not know you were also a world kickboxing champion and an uh, undercover Israeli police agent. How did these experiences help you persevere through these really unimaginable conditions? 
Oh, for sure. I mean, the training in kickboxing was. Well, my 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 kickboxing coach was very tough on me. I mean, he never ever um, complimented me or told me I did really good. Even when I won the world championship, he said, "Oh, you could have done better, right?" So he always told me that <laughs> you can always train better and be better and harder. There's no such thing as perfection. No one is perfect, right? And I think that helped me even with my hardcore type type of training. I don't reflect on the good. I always reflect on the bad of what I could improve on. And in regards to the military training i mean how they try to crack you mentally there's nothing harder than that so you know eh, race across america compared to the army is night and day so i think i think that helped me for sure okay so those were two kinds of training but what other kinds of training did you need to do to get your body and your mind ready for this tremendous challenge well, I mean, of course, there's like, you know, the core of just having a strong body with some weight training. Um, of course, proper nutrition is very important and lasering in because you think about how much training you're doing to compete in something like this. It's from 60 to 70 hours a week. So that's what you're doing for basically the full year. So it's 110% because this whole process to get ready for this race is it probably a year just with the crew and the rider and, and the logistics. So. I mean, it's it's a it's a full time job for sure. Unbelievable! Listening to Life on Rehearse with Matt and Corey, and that's the voice of Leah Goldstein, fifty two years old. Leah became the first female ever to win the overall solo division of the five thousand kilometer bike race across America in its thirty nine year history. Uh, Leah, we're 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 slowly wrapping up here, but I believe, and I'm so glad to hear that uh, I think uh, there was a documentary being filmed, or, or there will be a documentary coming out about your race is that correct and can you tell us about it yes actually it's not just about the race you're doing a documentary on my life that started about um, almost uh, almost three years ago but because of covid we had a little bit of a glitch we had to stop production Mm -hmm. so we're hoping that it's going to come out um early next year uh maybe late winter early spring and it's basically about my life right from the middle east as um in the idf a police officer ultra endurance racing pro racing and kickboxing so you got the full meal deal in that documentary <laughs> it'll be fascinating a, no doubt yeah thank you <laughs> what kind of reactions did people have once you uh won <laughs> I, I mean, the kind of reaction I had was, holy crap, what did I just do, right? You know, uh-huh. I mean, it was incredible. A lot a lot of um, uh, feedback and media attention, um, from, primarily from women and, and young girls and mothers came with their daughters and even men, right, you know, to see. I just think because the challenge of the, the logistics of this this round for this particular year, how difficult it was. Um, yeah, so the, the feedback was amazing. And it, it took me like two weeks before it actually sunk in. Oh, wow, I actually won this race. I'm the first woman. So it took a bit. A little bit to, to, to sink in. Now, um, you are Canadian. We've mentioned it once or twice. And, and so Canadian okay. and uh, first woman, kind of uh, appropriate during this, these Olympic weeks where we're talking sports and, and the wonderful uh, job that the Canadian women have been doing. Now, home for you yeah. is in the West Coast, correct? Yes, I, I'm in Vernon, uh, British Columbia, and I also in Vancouver. So I, I commute back and forth. My parents live in, in Vancouver. I'm very close to them. So I see them at least once a month. Um, have you been, a, I imagine you are a great role model to young women, to many, but I'm going to go, out, I'm going to go for young women. What advice would you give a young woman who, who, who hears about what you've done and is thinking about doing this? Well, I mean, with anything, I think it's, you know, is, is quitting is never an option. And whatever you do, it's 110%. And, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Because if you don't have the ability to fail, then you'll never have the ability to succeed in anything, right? And you should almost use that as strength, right? Because if you know my story, my backstory, I mean, if I had a penny for every time somebody told me I couldn't do something, I'd be a billionaire. So there you have it. I mean, use that as strength. I mean, your best revenge or challenge when somebody says you can't is prove them, proving somebody that you can. So that's basically what it is, is like I said, you reach your finish line no matter what it is and, and don't let anything stop you, especially failure and your fears. Yeah, so it's such a good point. And I think you are not just the physical component, which is just think about biking 5,000 kilometers, but I would imagine the mental part of it and the mental toughness and what you're talking about just there and giving advice. I think it is much mental as it is physical for many, many people. Um, And I just want to wrap it up, Leah. You 
also have a, a book uh, called No Limits, The Powerful True Story of Leah Goldstein, is Goldstein, world kickboxing champion, Israeli undercover police agent, and cycling champion. So we want to let people know that this book uh, is out there. It's done extremely well. And I would imagine this documentary you're talking about is going to be a bit of a summary of that book as well, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah, it's basically based on the book, exactly. Well, wonderful. Leah Goldstein, thank you very much for joining us on Life Unrehearsed. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's Leah Goldstein, 52 years old. She became the first female ever to win the solo division of the 5,000-kilometer bicycle race across America in its 39-year history. Corey, something else, isn't that? Mm, Unbelievable.